Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth Let it rain in us. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory.
Let the weight of your glory God, let the weight of your glory
Continue to exhort him. Continue to talk to him. Come on. Talk, continue to talk to him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come. Come on. Come on. Talk to him. Come on. Reference him. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Today is the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. For there's no one like you. Mighty God, we exalt your holy name. We bless your holy name. All praises goes to you. All our worship is to you. Father, we enter the holy of holies to worship you. We come to seek your face, not your hand. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven and begin to worship him. Come on, let's lift those hands to God. Let's lift those hands to God. Father, we thank you. Very good. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Mighty God, we exalt your holy name. For there's no one like you. Come on, talk to him. He's your God. Come on, talk to your God. Tell him how awesome he is. Tell him how good he is. Come on, he's your God. He's your God. Appreciate him. Exalt his name. Tell him. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he is doing. Thank you for what you will do. Come on, exalt his holy name. Exalt his holy name. Bless his holy name. The glory of the Lord is already here. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Talk to him. Bless him, talk to him. Talk to him in the spirit. Talk to him in the spirit. He's a great God. He's a great God. Come on, tell him. Tell him. Awesome God. Yes. 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 He's here. Oh, 
Holy Spirit is here. Worship them. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Talk to him. Come to him. Even you can worship him in tongue, in the spirit. You can praise him in the spirit. That's what they were doing in the day of Pentecost. They was worshiping God in the spirit. Uh huh. Uh huh. Worship him. Praise him in the spirit. Praise him. Praise him in the spirit. Aya. Aya. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise him. Worship him. Say, if I've been lifted up, I would draw all men. In Jesus' name. If you can stand, I want you to stand with me. If you can stand. If you can stand. And if you cannot stand, even if you have any injury or anything, stand, you will be healed. Today is the day of Pentecost. That's what happened that day. They were speaking in unknown tongues. They were speaking their neighbor's language. Say, Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. I am empty without you. So fill me and empower me. For great things on earth. Say, Holy Spirit of God. I am empty without you. I ask you to fill me today and empower me today for great works on earth. In the name of Jesus. Come on, talk again. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God. I am empty without you. So fill me and empower me for great work on earth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, you are the spring of living waters. Bring forth your freshness upon me. Holy Spirit, you are the spring of living water. Bring me to the fountain and refresh my weary soul. And refresh my weary soul. Say, Holy Spirit, you are the spring of living waters. 
Bring me to the fountain and refresh my weary soul. Say, Lord, let me be a companion of the Holy Spirit in bringing men to salvation, in bringing women to salvation. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. Heavenly Father, release your fire of tongue upon me. In the name of Jesus, as you did in the day of Pentecost, do it today, Lord. Empower me. Strengthen me. Induce me with power. In the name of Jesus. All of this I ask. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Come on somebody shout a loud amen. Come on let's give God praise and glory. Amen. You may be seated. That was awesome. I greet you all. That was powerful. Praise and worship was awesome today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. The worship place was awesome also today. Awesome. Oh, glory to God. We love God. Amen. Let's go quick to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Who is the Holy Spirit? For today, I want to, it's a continuation. I want to talk to you about the purposes, assignments, and function of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each other, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. On Friday, I talked to you that the Holy Spirit is not wind. Holy Spirit is not wind, but when the Holy Spirit is present, he always moves things. I also talk to you that Holy Spirit is not water, but Holy Spirit can wash more than water. Also, Holy Spirit is not fire. Amen? Holy Spirit is not fire, but he can purify more than fire. We talk, also I'll tell you who is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is to us what Jesus was to the disciples. What Jesus was to the disciples. Holy Spirit is also like that to us. Holy Spirit is not with us. So we talked about Holy Spirit is the administrator of the glory of God. Also, Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Glory to God. Holy Spirit also is the breath of life. Is the breath of life. Glory to God. Also.
the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Can I hear amen to that? Holy Spirit is our counselor. Amen. Holy Spirit is the witness of Jesus. Holy Spirit witness who Jesus is really is. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not have the true understanding or having the true knowledge of who Jesus is really is. Amen. We know who Jesus is really is. How? By the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit revealed the fullness of Jesus to us. Hallelujah. Even Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will take some of mine and he will reveal it to you. Can I hear amen to that? Also, the Holy Spirit is the physical evidence of the presence of God. Last week, uh, Friday, we, we were established that the Holy Spirit is God. Amen? Holy Spirit is God. Because he has the nature of God. He has the nature of God. I will focus on that today. He has the nature of God like an omnipresent, omnipotent, omni, omniscient God. Everything that describes God, all things that make God to be God. Holy Spirit has that. Amen? Amen? So he is the extension of God on earth. But today I want to talk to you about the purposes, the assignment, and function of the Holy Spirit. Why do Holy Spirit has to come? Let's go quick to John 16. John 16 verse 7. Jesus speaking here, he said, I tell you the truth. It is to your own advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, Holy Spirit is our helper. He said, the helper, the comforter, the advocate. I like that. The word advocate is a law term. That means Jesus is our lawyer. The advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. What is Pentecost? Pentecost means 50. That means 50 days. After Passover means Pentecost. The way it is count is seven Sabbath plus one. That makes it 50. So the disciples, Jesus told the disciples that he has to come. But the disciples cannot stop their function. They cannot stop their ministry. Because they have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. They have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, there is no empowerment. So Jesus told them he has to wait so that the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. That means we have some God standing by us. You are not alone. And that's why the, the scripture said, you are not alone. I will not leave you alone by yourself. You cannot be alone by yourself. We need a helper. We need a comforter. We need a strengthener. He's right beside you. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see him. He's right there. He stand by to protect and to keep us. Can we say amen to that? Now I will continue. But if I go, I will send him. The Holy Spirit to you to be in close fellowship with you. To be in close fellowship with you. How many fellowship with the Holy Spirit? How many talk to God? When you talk to God, you talk into what? To the Holy Spirit. How many 
talk to the Holy Spirit and make decisions with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Bible wants us to have a close fellowship with him. And he, when he comes, he will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a savior and about righteousness and about judgment and about sin and the true nature of it because they do not know him and my message about righteousness, personal integrity and godly character because I go to my father and you will no longer see me about judgment this I tell you to now let's talk about the work of the Holy Spirit, the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Number one, Holy Spirit brings us to salvation. Holy Spirit brings us to salvation. The Holy Spirit, how did it do that? When we go, we preach Jesus. Glory to God. We preach Christ. But it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. Holy Spirit convicts. Holy Spirit reproves and convicts unconverted people about sin and righteousness and judgment. You can see how we preach Jesus. So really, it's the Holy Spirit as we preach Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. He convicts, reproves, reproves, and convicts. Holy Spirit is the one that converts people of sin. Holy Spirit is the one that makes them change. He convicts them of sin. He convicts them of righteousness and of judgment. Glory to God. He brings us to salvation. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be saved. Amen. We cannot be saved. I'm saying Jesus also, we cannot be saved. Because the message of Christ has to be preached. So, when you preach, is the Holy Spirit, not the speaker, not the teacher, not the evangelist, not the apostle, not the teacher. What we do is to deliver the message of salvation. We don't force anyone to Jesus. Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. Holy Spirit is the one that reproves. Holy Spirit is the one that converts. We don't force, that's why I love Christianity. We don't force anyone to receive Jesus. We preach the word to them and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in the heart. We allow the Holy Spirit to convict them whatever they are doing. We are not to judge anyone. Holy Spirit is the one that do all of that. Some evangelists don't need that. They want to force you. You got to change by force, by force, and by fire, by fire. That is not God. Holy Spirit is gentle. Hallelujah. Even as I'm preaching right now, Holy Spirit is speaking into your heart. Holy Spirit is confirming what I am saying. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you see confirmation? He's confirming that this is true. Can we say amen? We have to know the work of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. That's number one. Number two, Holy Spirit produces conversion and regeneration. Conversion and regeneration. Holy Spirit. That is the purpose. The function of the Holy Spirit. It produces conversion. Holy Spirit is the one that changes. You can change. You can change anyone. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, that's why we have to pray and talk to the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to circumcise their heart. For people to change, their heart has to be circumcised. Are you hearing me? It's not by force. It's not physical. Amen. It's not physical. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the function of the Holy Spirit. He produces conversion and regeneration. Amen? Glory to God. Can you put that on the screen for me? Number 
First one is the work of Holy Spirit will bring us to salvation. Will bring us to salvation. Number two, it produces conversion and regeneration. Let's go to Titus 3 5. Titus 3 5. It's a not by the work of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And we live of the Holy Spirit. If we live by the Holy Spirit, regeneration is by the Holy Spirit. Conversion is by the Holy Spirit. So if you have a loved one that wants to be saved, no, don't force them to be saved. Amen. Minister to them to be saved and allow the Holy Spirit to convict them and to regenerate their spirit. And renew their spirit. This is a great work of salvation. It's only the Holy Spirit that can do this. Okay, let's go to John 6. John 6, 63. He says, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. By the Spirit. By the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that converts. It's the Spirit of God that regenerates. Glory to God. He says, it is the Spirit who gives life. The, fle the flesh profits nothing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you will see, when Adam and Eve were created, there was no life in them. God had to breathe inside of them. It is the spirit that gives life. Hallelujah. He said the word that I speak to the spirit, to, 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 to you are spirit. And they are life. It's the message of the gospel. When you preach it in the spirit realm, it penetrates you. It will enter you as a spirit. Because the Holy Spirit worked together with Jesus. Holy Spirit worked together with the Word of God. Even the message I'm preaching right now is the Spirit. I speak to you in the Spirit. And they are alive. That's why the Word of God is so powerful. The Word of God brings life to us. The Word of God put the Spirit of God in action. As I begin to speak right now, I don't even need to lay hands on you. The Spirit of God is in agreement with what I'm preaching and is enter you right now. It is Spirit. And that's how conversion happens. Conversion is not in our flesh. Conversion happens in our what? In our spirit. Glory to God. That's what we call Regeneration. You have to be born again. How can someone be born again? It's by the Spirit. Nicodemus did not understand the spiritual things. Jesus told him, You have to be born again. He asked Jesus, What do you mean? Do you mean I have to enter my mother and be born the second time? But, but Jesus said, ah, you have to be born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Everyone that is here, you are saved, is because of the Holy Spirit. It's because the Holy Spirit communicated you and the Holy Spirit gives you a new life. Can we say amen to that? Come on, can we say amen to that? Hallelujah. It produces conversion and regeneration. Let's go to number three. Of 
mercy and death. For we can be holy. How many know that you cannot be holy by your own strength? How many know you cannot be holy by your own power? Or by your own righteousness, receiving his holiness, receiving his perfection, receiving his healing. It was impossible. But we are blessed. We are free of sin. And we are free of death. So we can be holy. Hallelujah. So we can be holy. Let's go quick. Let me show you scripture. Let's go to Romans 8. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus has made me free from the law of 
of sin and from the law of death. So in other words, through the spirit of God, we are free from all this law by the power of the Holy Spirit. The law of the spirit is in Jesus. If you are in Jesus, hallelujah, you are free from the law of sin. You are free from the law of death. What does that mean? Does that mean you're not going to die? It means you will not sin a second time. Let's look at ourselves. We need to be absent from the body and also be absent from death. Physical death. Spirit has made you all free. So when you die, what happens? You are relocating from your body, you know, a smaller body, and re relocating to what? To heaven. Change of area. Glory to God. Change of destination. Change of location. So that you can live with Him for. Ever and ever and ever. Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. You will not see the second day. You will be present with God. Can I hear amen to that? Next one, I will share this quick. The purpose of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit give us an inward assurance of salvation. Give us inward assurance of salvation. If I ask you, son, are you saved? How do you know you are saved? John, are you saved? How do you know you are saved? the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How do you know you are saved? How do you know you are the son of God? How can you just know? How do you know? The Bible says we are the children of God. But how do you know it? It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. As soon as you say, I don't want to be a choir preacher for you. To know what the Holy Spirit has done. To know his assignment. To know his purpose. The scripture says, the Spirit of God, he wants us to have revelation to the Holy Spirit. Most people do not have revelation to the Holy Spirit. Most people don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. Some think that Holy Spirit is a messenger of God. No, it's not. No. Is he a messenger? Most people think he is a messenger of God. Most people don't know who the Holy Spirit is. Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is the extension of God on earth today. Holy Spirit is right here with us. We always say God is here, but he says how? Through his extension. Holy Spirit is the continuation of God on earth. Is not a messenger of God. The angels are messengers. They are messengers of the hair of salvation. Hallelujah. You can tell angels to go and do some assignment. You can say, Angel, go, go get my harvest and bring it to me right now. But the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Nobody is omnipresent except God. 
Holy Spirit is omniscient now. Knowing all things. Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Unlimited power. Are you hearing me? Hearing me? So how do you know that you are saved? I know that I am a son of God. But how do you know that? Let me tell you another thing, another, another amazing thing. How do you know? May I talk to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit and I, we have conversation. I don't make decisions on my own. I get the Holy Spirit involved in my decision. Amen. We have to have a close companion with the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Romans 8, 16. We're going to read it together. But before we go there, let's go to Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14. Read it there. But as many that are called. Can you go to 14? Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As many that are what? Led by the, by the, by the, what is it us? Holy Spirit. If we are not in close relationship with the Holy Spirit, we cannot be led. Everything that we do, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. He said, as many that are led by the Spirit. In other words, that are led by the Holy Spirit. Ah, the children of God. Ah, the children of God. So are you led to do the major that you are doing? Were you led to go to this school? Were you led to marry this person that you are with? Don't worry, nothing personal. Were you led by the Spirit or you just make your own decision? As many, we have the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to get to the church of Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit that can lead us, that can direct us, that can instruct us, that can tell us who to marry and who not to marry. Or what school to go, what job to take. Because there are some decisions that we make because we are not led by the Spirit. You're supposed to be an employer, but you are working for somebody. It's okay, it's not personal. Just ministering to you today. And you know what I'm saying? Some people are employers. Because they make their own. It's okay to be an employer. I used to work work for people too. There's nothing wrong with that. Is that what God wants to do? Some people are supposed to be employers, not employees. They were not led by the Spirit, they were led by circumstances. Your circumstances will deceive you and make you make wrong decision. But when you are led by the Spirit, Hallelujah! He said, "As many are led by the Holy Spirit, put only the Holy Spirit." I'm going to put it capital S. That tell you, Holy Spirit is God. <laughs> Holy Spirit is God. That are led by the Spirit are the what? The sons, not a gender. Sons and daughters of God. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit here. Glory to God. If you want to get a job, pray. If you want to go to school, pray and be led by the Holy Spirit. 
We have him with us. These are the assignment of the Holy Spirit. I want to call it the function of the Holy Spirit in believers' life. Now, as many that are led by the Spirit of God are the Son of God. How do you know you are a child of God? Let's go to verse 16. I want us to read together verse 16. One, it's on the screen. One, two, three, read. Read it one more time. One, two, three, read. One more time. Can we read it? One, two, three, read. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance. It bear witness with our spirit. That's why I said, you know that you know that you know. The Holy Spirit of God bearing witness with your spirit that, yeah, you are the sons and daughters of God. But what I know, there's a lot of sons and daughters of God. They are not being led by the Spirit. They are not being led by the what? By the Spirit. A few years ago, I got an invitation with um, Dr. Francis, I'm sure you know that story. When he first came here, he saw me with Planet. He said, Man of God, let's go to Africa. He said, Let's go to South Africa. Let's go to Kenya. And I'm going to Zimbabwe. And I want you to go with me. He said, The Kenya one, over 5,000 people there. I want you to go with me. And South Africa, their economy is growing. I didn't go by economy. Economy actually, probably the second after Nigeria in Africa. Good economy. It looked like America. I took your friend there when I was traveling, preaching in the country. Uh, uh, we are going somewhere to preach. We stopped in uh, South Africa on our way. Timothy. We enter South Africa. He said, Papa, is this Africa? Because it's like you are in Potomac, Maryland. Very nice. He said, Believe it or not, we are in Africa. The economy was growing. Kenya too was growing. It was big and growing. The third one was what? Zimbabwe. Probably they had the worst economy in the world. They are thankful. Thankful. You know what I say thankful? Blessed. Because of what their daddy did their daddy. I didn't rush and follow him. Where he was then? Where he was then? The first thing I do, I said, let me pray for him. Let me consult the Holy Spirit, the counselor. The strengthener, the comforter, the helper. I didn't just go with him to go over. I'm very busy. I'm a very busy guy. I do so much work. So many things. So much work. Guess what? I'm at work. God didn't tell me to go to a country that has good economy and look like America. God didn't tell me to go to Kenya. He said, go to Zimbabwe. Left for me alone, I will never, this many people, I will never go there. No, I will never go there. They are unsanctioned. You know what I mean? The economy is bad. Their currency is terrible. I'm serious. Terrible. But God say go. As many that's led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Children of God. Because the Holy Spirit is there to lead us. Now, let's go quick to 1 John 5, 6. He is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bear witness 
because the Spirit is true. The Holy Spirit is true. The Holy Spirit cannot lie. There's no lie in the Holy Spirit. Everything and anything the Holy Spirit said to you, it is true. It is the word of God. So the Holy Spirit is the one that also bear witness with us that we are the children of God. Let us go to John 4, John 5, 8. 4 John 5, 8. 4 John 5, 8. You see, and there are three that bear witness in on, on, on her. There are three. Which is what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Look at the word spirit. S is capital. That means Holy Spirit is a continuation of God on earth. Holy Spirit is God with us. Yes, we have blood and yes, water. But the Holy Spirit is the one that bear, bear witness. And these three are, are one. Also, when you continue, verse 7, we also talked about in heaven, there are also three that bear witness in heaven. The first one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you see on earth, the Father is not mentioned. The Son is not mentioned. The only one that is here is the Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. That's the assignment. Of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will be with us till the end. Even in the end time. In the end time, the last seven years of everything, Holy Spirit will be here. If it's not here, nobody will make it. Nobody can be saved. That means there's no spirit to convict you. There's no spirit. We cannot be saved by ourselves. There's no spirit to correct you. There's no spirit to combat you. It's the spirit that convicts. It's the spirit that combats. It's the spirit that convicts. Without the spirit, it cannot be done. Which is the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God is a God of order. He do things in three. The triumph man and the triumph God. I'm going to go this quick. Other work of the Holy Spirit. He empowers believers. Acts 1.8. Another work of the Holy Spirit. He guides us into all truth. He guides us into all truth. I want to read the scripture. John 16.3. He guides us into all truth. If we want to know the truth. Consult the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. When I take people to special prayer, deliverance prayer, guess what? How we operate? We operate by the Spirit. We pray and we listen to the Holy Spirit. We pray and we want to hear the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is what? Saying. Holy Spirit guide us into all truth. Holy Spirit empower believers. Acts 1.8 you shall receive what? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He guides us into all truth. John 16, 13. He teaches us all things. Amen. Because Holy Spirit is omniscient God. He knows everything. Come on church. He knows everything. Amen. He has the nature of God. Amen. Holy Spirit is what? He's a person. Holy Spirit is not a thing. Amen. It's not a thing. Holy Spirit is not a force. Amen, church. It's not a force. Holy Spirit is not a thing. Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. It's a person. That's why, if you see in the Bible, 
He has pronouns. Personal pronouns. Personal what? Pronouns. They don't call it thing or it. He. When he comes, H is capital. Holy Spirit is not an electricity. But when it comes upon you, it's not an electricity. Not only that, electricity, you can switch it on and right? If you want it to be on, you switch it on. If you want it to be off, you switch it off. Let me tell you, my dear, you cannot switch the Holy Spirit on or off. Why? Holy Spirit is a person. He has his own will. He has his what? His own will. You can't tell him what to do, how to do it. You can't tell him to stop. If Holy Spirit come over here now, begin to move around, I can't stop him. He has his own will. He's a person. He makes his own decision. I can pray for somebody and lay hands. Holy Spirit, the one that give, give which one he wants to give. Even I can ask the Holy Spirit to give healing. But Holy Spirit, uh -uh, I'm going to give you prophetic. I'm going to give you prophetic. I can say, okay, Holy Spirit, give me healing and prophetic. Holy Spirit said, no, I'm going to give you all the night gift of the Spirit. He does it how he wills. He's a person. We have to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Amen. You can talk to him. He will talk back to you. I don't know where your faith is. Nobody say amen to that. He guides us into all truth and I will stop. He teaches us all things. He gives life to our physical body. Amen. Let me ask you before you take that and offering, what do you want the Holy Spirit to do for you today? What? If you want the Holy Spirit to do something for you today, come, let me pray for you. And if you believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. I want the Holy Spirit to do something for you. Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. I am empty without you. I ask you in the name of Jesus to fill me today and empower me today to do great work on earth in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, I have learned today that you are not water. You are not fire. You are not wind. You are a person. And you are God. Holy Spirit, I ask you today to fill me the same way you fill them in Acts chapter 2. To Holy Spirit, I ask you in the name of Jesus to fill me. In the name of Jesus, to empower me. To do great work on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because now I have the understanding. I cannot do it by might. I cannot do it by power. I can only do it. By the spirit of God. So Holy Spirit. Empower me. Holy Spirit. Fill me. Holy Spirit. I also ask you. To give me the gift of the Spirit according to your will. I have learned today that you are not an electricity that can switch on and off. So I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you will fill me 
and give me the ninth gift of the Spirit according to your will. According to your will. According to your will. Say, Holy Spirit, you are the spring of living waters. You are the spring of living water. And know that you are not water. But I ask you today to bring me to the fountain where I can be refreshed by your spirit. Refresh me, Holy Spirit, by your spirit. Refresh my weariness. Refresh my weary soul. Holy Spirit, encourage me. Empower me. Refresh me to continue to run the race that is set before me. In the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, let me be a companion of the Holy Spirit in bringing people to salvation, to witness people to witness to people of our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I ask you today, let your fire, fire of the Holy Ghost, to come upon me now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I know you are not a fire. I know you are not fire. But you can manifest in form of fire. To quicken me. To quicken me. Holy Spirit, come upon me now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon me now. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless you. According to Romans 8, 14. As many that are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I will yield to you. I ask you to lead me. I ask you to, I ask you to lead me in my decision making. Lead me, Holy Spirit. Lead me, Holy Spirit. From today on, you are my senior partner. I ask you to lead me. Direct me. Instruct me. And I will obey. And I will obey. Holy Spirit, if I make a mistake, let your spirit speak to my spirit and let me know that I'm making a mistake or I'm going the wrong direction. I want to go the right direction. Holy Spirit, I ask you today to be my companion. To be my companion. And I want to be your companion. I want to for us to be in agreement. I will agree with you. Whatever you tell me to do. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on. If you are trusting God for something special, I want to pray for you as well. We are trusting God for something special that man cannot do. When I tell you, Holy Spirit can do it. Anybody? Just pray for everybody. Say, Holy Spirit, do something special in my life. Holy Spirit, you know all things. I ask you, in the name of Jesus, do something special in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know all that I need. And I ask you, in the name of Jesus, to do something special. Something special in my life. In, my, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Is anybody trusting God for a miracle? So, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I have learned today that the Holy Spirit is the continuation of God on earth. 
Holy Spirit, do miracle in my life. Holy Spirit, those things that are difficult in my life, the mountain in front of me, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I ask you to move it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to move it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have learned that Holy Spirit is omnipotent, unlimited power, unlimited power. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to move it. Move every obstacle. Move every obstacle by your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the finished work of the cross. I thank you. I thank you. And I bless you. I also say this to your trust God for healing. Holy Spirit, I ask you in Jesus' name to come upon me every sickness, disease, pain, take it away in the name of Jesus. I ask you to do this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. To take away sickness, to take away disease, to take away pain in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you. From today on, lead me. I will follow. Instruct me. I will obey. Guide me. I will praise you. I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Come, come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. I'm going to do one more thing. One more thing. I've been led to do this. For those that have a job working in the office and also um, business, say this, Holy Spirit, today I make you my senior partner in everything that I do. In my office, at my workplace, I want to be led by you. I want to be led by you. I want you to lead me. I want you to direct me. Also, those in business, say, Heavenly Father, I ask you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to be my senior partner, to lead me, to direct me in decision making. I need your advice. I need your counsel. Because you are our counselor. I ask you to lead me. Also, for those that are weak, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Empower me. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Empower me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more thing I will do. Is anybody here want to rededicate their life? Rededicate your life. Come quick. Nobody? Okay, we're going to pray this prayer together. For the sake of those that's thinking about it. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. And you died for my sin. Lord Jesus, I will dedicate my life to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, lead me. Guide me, empower me, strengthen me, comfort me, and help me. Sometimes I need help. I want you to help me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God praise and glory. Come on, somebody give God praise and glory. Amen. We're going to take our time and offer before we go. Glory to God. Amen. Just remember those things that we shared today from salvation. He bear witness with us. He knows all things. 
Another one I didn't get to, too. We we'll get there another time. He empowers our prayer life. Maybe we we'll talk about that Friday. He empowers our what? Prayer life. Prayer life. You empower your prayer lives. Also, he inspires praise and worship. You know you can pray, praise God in the spirit. You know you can worship in the spirit. <laughs> you worship God in the spirit, in tongues. Yeah, you pray in tongues. He empowers it. We will, we will go over that maybe Friday. He gives us power for service. Tired and often ways to give. Ways to give. Everlasting life CC. Everlasting life dot org. Slash give. Give to Cash App. to PayPal and Zelle. Let's give to support the work of the ministry. Amen. And as we give, God will bless us. Amen. I mean, know that God is able to bless us spiritually, financially. Glory to God is able to do it as we support the work of the ministry. He will bless us exceedingly. The first thing you do is bless us spiritually. Amen. Amen. I want that first. Come on. How many want spiritual things first? Amen. Because the spirit control the natural. Spiritual thing first. Amen. If you have an envelope. You want envelope? Amen. You can stand if you have your offering. You can give right now. Let your phone just go. If you want to do cash app, everlasting life CC. That's cash app. Website everlasting life.org. Amen. O-R-G. Also, we have been praying for those that have resumes. You will see a lot of power here. Sean, can I get that for me? If you have a resume or project you are working on, God instructed us during the week. I am here. We are here praying. You are trusting God. You have a job. You have a project you are working on. You have been challenged business or job promotion. Resume, please bring it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, prayer is going on. When you are not here, we are praying. We are praying. We are praying. And that's why God giving all this leading. Go here. Do this. Sometimes I don't even act. He knows. So there's relationship. Amen. So if you have a project, if you don't have it now, bring it Sunday. So you put it in the altar. Normally on Mondays, I'm here. We lay hands. People are with us. Praying for you, for you to prosper. Amen. We take it serious. We take the things of God very serious. So if you don't have yours yet, resume, bring it. Do pray. Amen. And uh, God will grant you. Because the Bible tells us the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. God will touch the heart. We've seen in this ministry before that we gave somebody a job that they didn't qualify for. It's okay if they don't qualify. They will train you. They will train you to be qualified. And they give you what you didn't qualify for. Mr. Sean, put it back here. Bring it. We'll be praying overhead for God to prosper us. 
this church has to prosper. You have your resume, bring it. You have a project, proposal, bring it. Amen. Business plan, bring it. I truly believe God wants to bless us. God wants to bless everyone. He wants us to be fruitful. Amen. You have your offering. To tie with you, Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless your holy name. We thank you for the tithe and offering, the job that you have blessed us with. Father, bless everyone. Increase them in every area of their lives. Those that are giving, bless them exceedingly abundantly. And those that don't have to give, also bless them so they too can partake in giving and receiving. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Even Lady Corrine gave a testimony Friday. How many had a testimony? What a testimony. Powerful. It was declared. You know, some things are not to be so, but when you declare it in the name of Jesus, all these people will go and make it happen. It was declared a few Fridays ago, two Fridays ago. That uh, somebody's going to get a job that they're not expecting. They're not bargaining for. And then a job came, correct? Actually, the job that came, salary, double what she's making now. Doubled. Doubled. It was spoken. It was the Holy Spirit. There's no way. Now we know that. There's no way I would know that. I heard it. That God want to bless somebody here in a job that they didn't, they don't back in him for. But go do great miracle. Okay. And she gave testimony. It was double than the amount that she is making right now. Amen. And it is still in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now even so, when they send the offer, it will be a little bit higher too. God, God did that for somebody. He was expecting a little money. He called him. Actually, what I told the person to do, he called me for prayer, right? And the Lord told me, mm -hmm, don't pray. Tell the person to make a vow. That they'll be faithful and giving their time and offering. I told him today, he did it the same day. He did it the next day. Then he called me, he did it. I said, yes. And how after he did that, made a vow to God. There was a job he was trying to get. I won't mention his name. I think I mentioned his name, but I won't do it. Holy Ghost, he didn't come. The job he was expecting, he applied about three weeks back. Eight weeks? Eight weeks? Eight weeks. Then he got him. The, best guy. the moment I made that vow to God, see, it's between you and God. Amen. Sometimes I like to stay out of it. Between you and an hour later, the person called, somebody called. The first thing they did, they apologized. The company. Apologize to say, we are sorry if we have called you, you know. See, the Holy Spirit made that person apologize. Yeah. If convict, come on, yeah. preach that. Conviction, he convict. Yeah. Yeah. The guy was convicted. He apologized. He going to call you back within one week. In one week. Say something to Two days later, they call. The amount that the person asked for, they gave him more. They gave him more. They gave him more. And, and, and when he got him, he was happy and jumping and jumping. But the other people was telling me, it's supposed to be more. It was good man. But the Holy Spirit was telling me it should be more. I shall not mention an amount of I don't know about that. But guess what? When the offer letter came, it was more. Come on. It was way more. Because the Holy Spirit knows everything. Can I? After service, I, I want to pray for some people. After service, I know some people that will go. I feel the anointing of truthfulness. I believe I started that message yeah, because of our Pentecost has come. I feel truthfulness. Truthfulness. 
Those that trust God for job for this thing, after you will raise come. Let me touch on my glory to you. I'm saying that. You will come with testimony. Holy Spirit want me to do this. And it shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Lean not. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Not to your own I will, I will hide your word in my heart. I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean on to your Lord. I will hide your, I will hide your word in my heart. I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. And lean on. I heard something when I was in my seat, and um, I think it was pa- it was Pastor um, Martin that she spoke it about a c- couple weeks ago. But we're like, well, you know, so much, so many things is going on. Is what I said in my mind. I just said, I just smiled when she said it to me. She said to me, Pastor, what about the resurrection seed? I was like, well, you know, let it be. I heard it. I heard it when I was sitting there. And the Lord is reminding me that it should never be ignored. He spoke it. How many years ago? Where, where's Pastor um, Reggie? He's gone. Okay. Because Pastor Reggie was one of the witnesses because she had got it. I forgot how he had gotten it, was it in the spirit or whatever, but he had got it the same Sunday, it, 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 uh, a few days before, t- and he was coming to tell us that God was saying, talking about the resurrection seed. Anybody remember that? From back then? Anybody? If, if you remember that, let me see your hand for the ones that were here. Everybody, okay, we got a, a few hands that remember that. Amen? So people, God is reminding us about the resurrection seed, and he's saying that we should not forget it. Resurrection seed in this season. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now that I give my peace, I'm good. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Pastor Honey? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Um, amen? You want to find out what he wants to Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I know he's about to close, so can you go ahead and stand so we can close on um, Thank God for the faithful ones that, huh? You were saying something? Oh. I thank God for the faithful ones that, uh, wow, are faithful in their tithes, uh, to give to in their tithes and offering. And Lady Corinne, you're one, I remember. I know that for a fact. Amen. And several people here are, are, are very faithful. They, they place God first. Hallelujah. And if you, if you have young children, I want to encourage you, let them start at a young age. Amen. We start them at a young age that we put God first, even in their, in their, in their, uh, whatever it is that get an allowance, whatever you put, you will see the difference. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord made his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding